Hello everyone, um, Robert here. Today I want to tell you about some art I made using some tarot cards. Now me and some friends of mine, my partner and another art couple, we, we rent a project room in Berlin, um, or we have done, every summer for three years um, in a street called Potsdamer Strasse. And we, we put on a sort of pop-up art festival. We make an exhibition uh, that fills the space and... Um, and then we, inside this exhibition, we put on some performances and we invite some people and we have readings, performances, concerts, theatre and stuff like that. It's all very small scale. It's all within the art gallery. And this is all in Potsdamer Strasse, which you see here. And we're at the scuzzy end of Potsdamer Strasse, not, not the high end with all the, the proper art galleries and, and the National Gallery and, and the Philharmonie and stuff like that. We're, in, we're at the, uh, the Schoenberg end, which is nearer to where... David and Iggy used to live back in the in the good old days. Okay, so the first room is is the work of Gunter Jürgen Klein, even though he and Ulrike Klein credit themselves always as one unit, as one artist. Um, and uh, there's a, a prop from our theatre production. There's the poster. And here's another poster where you see all the artists involved in our festival. And very nice too. See Wrench and Franks there, the lovely Barbara Cuesta. Okay, this is um, the room done by my partner, Achim. It features photographs that he did in 2001 and 2002 after 9-11. And on one side of the, of the wall, um, it says war, and on the other side of the room, it says raw, the two ways of responding. This third room was done by Ulrika Klein, and um, it has a very interesting esoteric uh, meaning, which I won't go into here, but it's very beautiful. And in this room, we placed my object, which, it, which you see here under a, what they call a cake bell. The object is called Infusion d'Iris, Infusion of Iris, which is the name of the perfume in the object. I started off just feeling I, I wanted tarot to appear in an art gallery. Um, I think it's um, odd when I meet artists who, who want to distance themselves from tarot. But I mean, a lot of clever, educated people do want to distance themselves from, from the esoteric and from the spiritual. But tarot in particular seems to me to be um, very much about, I mean, very similar to art in a sense in what it does, in that it, it, it helps you to, to think differently. And I think it helps you to access your, your bigger brain. And I think art is about that as well. And I also think, you know, tarot sort of seems to have a place in, in the history of art because, you know, even though it comes from the Renaissance, it seems very much, um, for me, to be linked to surrealism. So I think, you know, if someone is an artist and has studied the history of art, I think it's, I think it's very strange that they can't see what kind of a place tarot has in the art, you know, um, world, the art universe. But anyway, I started off putting tarot cards down and just arranging objects, not really knowing what I wanted to do. I had tarot cards, some old coins, the old coins have heavy, heavy sentimental meaning for me. Um, quite sad meaning, in fact, which I won't go into here. And some perfume, and you can see the sample of the perfume here, and some lipstick. And I was arranging it on the table, and, and it began... I, I realised that I couldn't change which cards had gone down. Those are the three cards that went down at random. And I realised I couldn't change them. That was... Those three cards was the story that this art piece was going to tell. And... Gradually, it became a piece about what happened to my family in the 70s, which was a kind of um, catastrophe, really. Someone died. Um, someone got divorced. No prizes for guessing who. And um, people suffered. And then people recovered. I think, um, even though I don't exactly know what this piece is about, it's, it's about the fact that, you know, you do recover from difficult times and from sad events. But I'm not just being feel good about it. I also think that you recover and also you kind of never do because the past never really dies. In a sense, we live our whole lives in the past because each thought 
by the time it gets to your consciousness is in the past. The question is how far in the past is something. And I think in terms of one person's lifetime, it doesn't really matter how far in the past something is. It's still there. So so this whole story is, is put under glass. And then the final detail is that there's this little teddy bear hanging outside the glass and looking in. And, you know, one has the feeling that there is this, you know, the young me at the age of nine watching these events unfold, watching these people suffer and not really understanding it as I don't really understand this piece. I know roughly what I think it means, but I don't know why all those objects are where they are.